Welcome to the folks who are just joining us on ESPN2. We're 11 minutes into the She Believes Cup finale between the United States women's national team and Iceland. For the U.S., only a win will do tonight. A draw won't be enough to claim the title. If it finishes even, the visitors will be your 2022 She Believes Cup champs. Julie Foudy and Sebastian Salazar with you on the call. Julie, so far, a bright start for the Americans. Bright start for the Americans. Mal Pugh has a good look early on. They're having some success getting into the final third. But as we saw in their very first game here at the She Believes Cup, a lot of success early on didn't translate. Can it here? Sanchez on the ball. Now back for Sullivan. And for those of us watching on ESPN News, now the time to move over to ESPN2 for the rest of this match. Jan Stotter. Beautiful switch for Albert Stotter, who's got acres of space in front of her. Albert Stotter still across. Alana Cook there to make the play. Macario. Well held up, now sprays for Sanchez. Pew, in behind everybody. Pew into the box, to the end line. Macario! Sigurd Ardotter again. Great positioning by the Icelandic goalkeeper. Much more open game than I think anyone anticipated with Iceland only needing the draw. Good news. To see that, but if you're the United States with the aggressiveness that Emily Fox on that left side and Kelly O'Hara on the right side from that outside back position are attacking, the problem is it leaves you susceptible. Here is the United States on the break. Mal Pugh thinking, okay, I'm gonna take on, get around the corner. Macario getting the lucky deflection, but she guarded she got daughter there for the save with a good positioning. Making her 40th international appearance and so far putting on a show. The Icelandic goalie, 35 years old. She'll be tested here. Standing over the ball with plenty of options. 14th minute. Macario. Cook charging in, but wasn't first to it. Half clearance falls to Ashley Sanchez. Challenge from Andy Sullivan. Of course, Julie, we mentioned it off the top of the broadcast, but a important week for this U.S. Women's National Team, the team and the U.S. Soccer Federation announcing on Tuesday a settlement in the equal pay lawsuit that dates back to early 2019, really early 2016 if you want to go back uh, even further uh, early 1990s if you want to go back even further fox across cut out by vigo stotter davidson all the way up hawk oh, smith well done fox now sanchez take it off her teammate macario for the cross Sanchez, Sanchez! Fox whistles it over the bar. The Americans knocking on the door in the 15th minute. And with all the pressure around the box for Iceland, it looks on goal, saves, deflections. 
the United States dominating as again we said against the Czech Republic they did early there's the one with Fox over the bar are they gonna get frustrated did that take a deflection in the end are they gonna get frustrated with the fact that they were unable to finish in that first game and ended up with a draw and again this is a younger group all good moments for them to have to fight through but in the end, this pressure has to bring them something. Talked after that first game against the Czech Republic, ending with so much domination and so much possession that they just needed to be cleaner in front of goal. And right now, it feels like they're just knocking on the door for the United States. Sullivan into the corner. Manages to keep it in. And maintain possession for the U.S. Quickly to Pew. Sanchez flicked on at the near post. But it trickles to Sigurd Ardotter. Sanchez all over the field here. Mm. Just finding a little gap, trying to make something of the pew ball coming across. And they also talked about getting better on that final pass, finding the seam. You can see Pew looking up, trying to pick her poison. At stake tonight, the She Believes Cup title. U.S. needs a win, Iceland just a draw. This is the seventh edition of the tournament. United States has won four of the first six. Trouble now, Albert's daughter against O'Hara. Gisela Dodger, beautiful one-time ball. Davidson, the header away. And a very late offside flag coming. I think here's the ball in. Can't see the offside from that angle. Good clear by Davidson, though, off that back line. O'Hara overcooks the pass from Macario. Glodis Perlavigo's daughter launching it forward for Iceland. She's found Jon's daughter. Jon's daughter and Fox should be a really good matchup on that far sideline. Here they go, one on one. Jon's daughter. Fox holding up. That is going to be one to watch tonight. Fox, 23 years old, coming off a rookie season with Racing Louisville. The number one pick in the 2021 NWSL draft. Filling it now for Crystal Dunn, who would usually be the starter there. Dunn pregnant. Throw to the near post. Americans could get a break here. Iceland pushed all the way up, Smith. Just ran out of real estate. 19 minutes in, still scoreless between the United States and Iceland. Gonna Jan starter ahead. Appeals for a handball from Iceland. Batista, the referee, says play on. And as this game goes on, Sebastian, 20 minutes in now. The earlier look for Iceland. Williams' daughter wanting to get a handball there. A little more confidence you're seeing from this Iceland team growing into this game. When you think about their country, population for all of Iceland is about 350,000. That's less than a third of the population of the city of Dallas. Not the suburbs, right. not the metro area, just the city of yeah. Dallas. Little suburb here, Frisco, Texas, is 206,000, I looked up. So you're about two-thirds of the way there. 
to what all of Iceland is. There's only nine to 10,000 total girls and women registered to play soccer in that country. Yet they've had such success of, as we've seen globally in football on both the men's and the women's side. It really is remarkable. Corner kick in the 21st minute. Can they find an opener? No, Casey Murphy comes out to gather on the second effort. In speaking with the manager Halderson last night, we asked him how. He said, oh, we, we need another Zoom call for that. <laughs> and really part of a, a national effort that began in the early 2000s, massive government-led investment in the game. They effectively, Julie, just flooded the island with both places to play and certified paid coaches. And the dividends have paid off in both the men's and women's game. We saw the men's team at the 2018 World Cup. This Icelandic women's team has never qualified for a World Cup or an Olympics, but as we told you at the beginning of the broadcast, that may change this year. Going to their fourth straight Euros, though. So they've done well in the European Championships. Pew in behind. Pew one-on-one. -on -one. Fires wide and a goal kick coming for Iceland. You can see Vlako wanting that as well. That ball in that releases her with her pace. Again, that first touch. Maybe if she could just get it a little bit in behind the final defender, gives her a better opportunity to angle up on goal. But really one you have to get on target and on frame. Americans still pressure. Again, Pew on her left, blocked away. O'Hara, Pew into the corner. Isla under the block, and we'll have a corner kick coming up for the United States in the 23rd minute. The Americans tilting the field towards the Icelandic goal. Seventieth cap for Mallory Pugh, her 19 goals more than any other player on the roster. Great story of perseverance from Pugh. She was left off the Tokyo roster after making the previous World Cup and the previous Olympic team. And last year she finished second in the NWSL MVP voting. Christy Mewis, the in-swinger. Skipping dangerously through the area. Sanchez shot, can't see its way through the Iceland defense. Neither can her dribbling effort. <laughs> ESPN's coverage of U.S. soccer is presented by the all-electric Volkswagen. ID4. Safe Atladonner. The number two for Iceland with a throw in. Offside flag up on the near sideline towards that American attack. Good movement by that front three. That's one thing they've wanted to see. Look at Macario just in the offside position, trying to get it wide. Pew trying to get in behind on the other side. And it's a chemistry of time, as Andonovsky talks about needing minutes. He said, look, yes, am I happy with that 5-0 victory over New Zealand? And we got some goals. But this is going to take more than two games. Mewis. U.S. pinging it around. Macario goes one on three. Appeals for a handball. And 
this is the seam they want to see Macario and getting it underneath that back line, facing up and seeing what she can do. You can hear the roar for that handball. Would you have given it? I would have given it. Sanchez running the break down. Mewis to her right, she's found her. Christy Mewis on her left foot. Oh! Just missing the far post. She got our daughter again with the positioning. Mewis, excellent first touch, shapes up. You can see where she's wanting to go. Seagard's daughter on that near post, sends her wide. And she has been great in goal for Iceland tonight. Vlad Goyanovsky won just under 80% of his game since taking over in late 2019. Usually plans out his substitutes for matches like this, but in a must win, that's not the case today. He'll react to how the game plays out. And the goal tonight for the Americans, must win. Sophia Smith there doing the work on both sides of the ball, loses it with her back to goal, immediately wins the ball back. It's something NWSL fans will be very familiar with. I think she actually leads all of NWSL with balls won in the final third. Macario to offer service, 28th minute. No breakthrough yet. Iceland's defense up to the task. Macario again working against a triple team. I do, I do like what you're seeing with Pugh and Smith switching sides. Now Smith back out on that right side, Pugh popping out on the left. Albert started to the ground. Iceland will take over deep in their own end. Go, 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 ball the way, quick. Playing out of the back, going wrong there for Iceland. Corner kick. Coming for the United States. MLS on ESPN kicks off this Sunday with the LA Galaxy. We got Chicharito Hernandez and company hosting. The defending MLS Cup champions, New York City FC, John Champion, Taylor Twelman will be on the call starting at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN and streaming live on the ESPN app. Hey, I'm a Donald, that's my guy. <laughs> Running the American Outlaws, he's from D.C. <laughs> Dangerous ball still not cleared. And now finally a whistle goes in the area. Christine, take the corners a little quicker. A little quicker. Do you think they want Christy to take the corners a little <laughs> I love quicker? Love those boom mics. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness for the boom. Katarina Bacario would like to see that zero goal, zero assist, as she told us last night, change, but she said, I'm trying to be patient. I haven't gotten a goal here at the She Believes Cup. Trying to understand it's a process. This is a player that's familiar with scoring. Nine goals, tied for second in the French League with her club in Lyon. She is in mid-season form as well, so you can see the challenge of being patient. Fox, Pew, Pew and Atletotter. 
Big challenge from Jan Stutter. Gunny going to ground. The captain plays for the Orlando Pride in the NWSL. Was actually teammates with both Becky Sauburn and Kelly O'Hara when they played at the Utah Royals. Thirty minutes in and still no goals for the United States. Again, the Americans need to win tonight in order to win the She Believes Cup. And Julie, I'm not overstating it to say it would be a huge disappointment if they don't win this tournament, right? Absolutely. And I think you could even argue, even with all the younger players they have on this roster, it would be a huge disappointment. I mean, this is a team that's clearly good enough to beat these teams. Smith with a back heel. Sullivan. Sanchez working wide. All sorts of American pressure. And maybe just a little more patience in there for Ashley Sanchez when she faces up, trying to force a ball into three, four blue jerseys in the box. Hasn't been successful for the United States. And this is the time of the game, post 30 minutes in, with the chances and looks they've had, there can be a tendency when you look at that score line to go, why aren't we getting it in? Albert Stoddard plays a professional ball in Sweden, driving at the American defense. Oh, had it on her right, now goes back to her left. Fox with a huge clearance. As Iceland found a moment of danger in the 33rd minute. Albert Stoddard having some success on that left-hand side with Kelly O'Hara. Tries to spin her, O'Hara stands her up, but eventually gets that across. Fox in a great position. So Jan's daughter's not on the end of that. Albert's daughter, Jan's daughter, a couple of young, exciting players for this Icelandic team. Albert's daughter, 22. Jan's daughter, just 20. Both already playing abroad. In fact, 15 of the 23 players on this Icelandic roster play professionally outside of Iceland. Sullivan, captain the Washington Spirit to an NWSL title last year. Davidson picks out Mewis. She's found Smith. Sophia with space to run at Gisela Daughter. Smith. Ball to the near post. Pew goes down. No call from the referee. And no VAR in this tournament. All of that last sequence started with Tierna Davidson finding Mewis in the seam who finds Smith. And as she's willing to do will take on pew trying to get to that near post just a half step late i think that's a good no call by the referee with that one but the seam that davidson found mewis in is one the united states will want to find it's underneath that back line of iceland and that's when they can work that magic with macario having a hard time finding macario they found her here. Sanchez for Smith. Oh, 
Iceland on the counter. Youngstad in a race with Fox, and she's not going to win it. Fox's pass cut out. Jan Stoddard, Fox again and again, Fox wins. <laughs> Macario floating to the left. Pew takes up position in the middle. Macario on her right, bends it into the... Golazo! Oh my goodness! Katarina Macario, take a bow! As we were saying, she mentioned last night, I just need to be patient. It all starts in field she starts it plays it back to pew finds it again from sanchez shapes up finds a little window and that is about as pretty as they come because watch her take this little look she's going to take a glance up and there it is back of the net from macario her first goal here in the she believes cup and what a beauty it is Her fourth career international goal. A huge goal for the player and a huge goal for the national team. If this result stands, the Americans will be the 2022 She Believes Cup champions. Still a long way to go in Frisco, Texas. But the Americans have their breakthrough and they have it critically before halftime. Such a pretty three player combination, Macario starting all of that and then finishing all of that. The Americans not satisfied. They want a second before the break. Ball deflects dangerously across the goal mouth. Iceland on their heels. O'Hara looking for an option. Mewis. U.S. looking to switch the point of attack through Davidson. The idea was there. The length of the field was not. Pew couldn't track it down. Pew looking so good on that left side. Quick restarts, quick throw-ins. Finding Macario, getting it back. Here's the goal again. Beautiful little chipped in ball to Macario. Faces up. All she needs is a little window. She's just looking for a gap. Iceland, if you're not going to step, this is what's going to happen to you, is what she's saying. Macario, born in Brazil, moved to the U.S. at age 12. She got FIFA clearance to play for the United States last January. And you can see just how quickly she has become a key part of this team. Plays professionally at Lyon. What she tell us last night, Julie, being able to train every day with the world's best as a rookie has been just huge for her development. Yeah, she said it's just a, a dream come true to, to literally be facing up against the best players in the world on a daily basis and do this for a living. She said, I. No regrets at all on, on that decision. And I think people expected her to do well in that situation, but to come to straight out of college without 
national team experience. And for her to be almost leading the league, second in the league with nine goals, four assists, playing such good soccer, I do think that took people by surprise, that we have known there is so much upside to Katarina Macario. Been talking about her for years with her success at Stanford as well. But to do it at that level is another thing. She was so candid with us last night too, Julia. She used the word scared to describe how she felt at last year's She Believes Cup. That that goal there, that wasn't the goal of a scared player. <laughs> the Meanwhile, difference a year it makes. The Americans now set to defend 41st minute. It'll be Isla Daughter with the service. Murphy, skies high, and now springs Pew on the counter. Pew, meet me, past Albert's daughter, but not Young's daughter. What a recovery from the right winger. Macario posting up. She wanted the Megs. That led daughter up to the task. Iceland have had some moments of danger, but Julie, I don't think I've called the name of their number nine, Berglund Bjork Thorvaldsdottir. Hardly gotten a touch. Hasn't had much success in that nine position. Most of their success has come from their wingers. Pew to Sanchez. Great run. Washington Spirit attacker just missing the finish. Sanchez's presence on that front line constantly pushing those back four of Iceland. If it's not Pew on the left or Smith on the right or Macario in the middle, they've got a midfielder and Ashley Sanchez they're also having to deal with. Add Christy Mewis into that equation. It's a front five that becomes quite a handful. We had a handful of soccer for you on ESPN Plus this weekend, including the Carabao Cup Final. Christian Pulisic's Chelsea against Liverpool this Saturday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern on ESPN Plus. Albert's daughter double teamed, slams it off O'Hara, and for her effort, she'll earn a corner kick. And this is where the United States has to be careful. Iceland has been very good on set pieces and super aggressive in this area. And their World Cup qualifier against the Czech Republic beat them 4 0. Two or three of those goals coming off of set pieces. That's what Vlad Glandinovsky was warning us about last night. He said on dead balls, they're physical, they're aggressive. Perhaps a little too physical. Look at those four jerseys around Murphy and goal. Carolina Leo Williams' daughter approaching for a short corner. And here she is, the number eight. Driven to the near post, takes a deflection. And this will be whistled dead on account of the offside flag on the far sideline. It is a smart play to put those numbers around Casey Murphy because Teams know with her height at 6-1, she comes for balls. She comes and commands that six. She can come out to the 12 even and command balls and so good in the air, clean. And you put that traffic in front of her, that's a different story. You're having to fight through players to get to balls. We promised you off the top of the broadcast, you would hear from U.S. Soccer Federation President Cindy Parlow Cohn. She will be joining us at halftime talk about the settlement in the equal pay lawsuit between the U.S. Women's National Team and the Federation. Make sure to stick around for that. Sullivan turning out of pressure for O'Hara. O'Hara, one of the few veterans in this squad. He's found Mewis. And now Pew. Pew! Just missing Macario. Macario the chip. Oh, yes! Que golazo! Another one for Katarina!
Christy Mew is starting this in midfield, finding that seam, beautifully paced ball into Mal Pugh, tries to cut it back and put it on her right foot. Little too much to Makaru, but again, having the presence of mind to say, okay, what's given to me? And that's the other side of the goal. Whether she's trying to find Pugh on that backside or not, it really doesn't matter. That one goes in the books for Katarina Macario and another beautiful finish for the young number nine. Her fifth goal with the national team and both tonight have been absolute beauties. Daughter to put it in play in the 47th minute. Iceland running out of time here in the first half. Wait, wait. Wait. Looks like she might have taken a shot to the head there as we get a whistle. Such a different looking U.S. team. No Megan Rapino, Alex Morgan, Kristen Press, Tobin Heath, or Julie Ertz all left off of this roster. Sam Mewis still recovering from an injury. Crystal Dunn is pregnant. Lindsay Horan and Abby Dahlkemp were originally called in, but then had to be dropped because of injury concerns. Rose and then Lavelle. in the tournament, Rose Lavelle and Trinity Rodman coming down with ankle injuries. So despite that, the United States leads at the half. 2-0 over Iceland in this decisive match. A win and the Americans take the trophy. And right now they are halfway home. Katarina Macario with a goal in the 37th and the 45th. We'll be back in just a moment from Frisco, Texas with U.S. Soccer Federation President Cindy Parlow Cohn. ESPN's coverage of U.S. Soccer is brought to you by Volkswagen. So we welcome you back to the last game of the 2022 She Believes Cup. A winner-takes-all affair between the United States and Iceland. The U.S. Women's National Team leading 2-0 at the half thanks to two goals from that young lady, Katarina Macario. Alongside Julie Foudy, I'm Sebastian Salas. Our moments away from second half kickoff. In a winter storm warning in North Texas. Temperatures dipping down into the low 20s as we get set for the second half. What a difference in mindset, and especially for a young team in the United States. When you walk in at halftime, at 0-0 and you walk in at halftime at 2-0. And that could have easily been a 0-0 halftime speech. But a very different mindset for the United States. They do not want to take their foot off the, gra the gas, that's for sure. You cannot get complacent and drop into a low block. You got to keep pressing, but you also have to have the combination of when to go, when to slow the game down. I mean, these are the things they're going to have to layer in as Andonovsky was telling us, this younger group is 100 miles per hour all the time. And understanding the pacing of that game. Iceland have made a change in gold. Sandra Sigurdar daughter is out. In comes Cecilia Runar's daughter. The 18 year old who plays for Bayern Munich will get 45 minutes of great international experience against the number one ranked team in the world. Another change for Iceland up top. Svavaros Goodman's daughter on for Berglind Bjorg, Thorvald's daughter. Thorvald's daughter hardly a touch in that first half. Operating as Iceland's number nine. Here's Smith operating. Her pass wide for O'Hara, just clipped out of bounds. Christy Mewis then to take the third American corner kick of the evening. What a story, Christy Mewis, the U.S. Soccer Young Female Athlete of the Year in 2008. 
clawed her way back into the national team picture here later in her career. And she'll get another chance at a corner. Another good story of perseverance, Julie. She debuted with the U.S. in 2013, played again in 2014, did Mewis. Then a five-year absence down to injury and form. And yet here she is, well-established back into the national team. If I'm correct, I think it was almost 2,500 days mm. between her 14th and 15th cap, 15th and 16th cap in that gap. It's such a great story to see her back and thriving with the U.S. jersey on, overcoming the knee surgery and rehabbing back in. Now with Gotham FC, but really turned her career around when she joined the Houston Dash in 2017. Remember an interview she did where she said she was okay being average. And Christy Mewis, far from average now. Starter, well driven ball. Davidson strong header away. Really has been a quiet night so far for number 23, Jan's daughter for Iceland here on with the long throw. Emily Fox on the matchup there doing a really good job. Oof. Big collision in the box. Goal kick coming for the United States. Katamarina Macario on a hat trick. If she gets it, it would be historic. We've never had a hat trick, Julie, in the She Believes Cup. It's such a good lesson for young kids watching as well. In that conversation with Macario last night, where you could see her fighting through the patience topic and saying, I have to be okay with that. And I haven't been in the past, and it, it's hurt my game because I get too focused or too tight or too stressed about the fact that I'm not store, store, uh, scoring. And again, part of the maturation with this younger group and experience. Emily Fox winning the header over Jon's daughter. I thought Fox had a really good first half, Julie. Agreed. Safe Atla daughter puts it in play. From a footballing family, her father actually played for and then managed the men's national team. U.S. not afraid to play out of the back. And Ashley Sanchez not afraid to dribble out of it. She's got Pew ahead. Quick ball from Mallory Pew. Smith all alone, but it was behind her. Smith squaring up on Gisela daughter. Smith! Left-footed shot, Tess Runar's daughter, but not enough. Young goalie makes her first save of the evening. I think that was actually unlucky by Pew. You can see her look up and see Smith on that backside. Just gets that angle with that bent ball a little bit wrong. Another five, seven yards in front of that. Smith is running onto that. Right idea, just couldn't quite execute it. Sanchez outside of the foot, falls to Macario. Vera firing at the near post off target. O'Hara, one of the new leaders on this team. She played in every major tournament for the U.S. going all the way back to the 2000. 11 World Cup. Uh, Tiffany Roberts, look at that. Part Former of teammate. Yep, part of the staff here, one of the assistant coaches who's been helping out UCF, University of Central Florida head coach. Macario, another chip. Oh, sliding across the goal, the Americans unlucky not to find a third. And you just get that feeling, Sebi, with the presence of Sophia Smith on that right side. Mal Pugh on the left. Again, it's Sanchez to Macario. That's a pairing that's been really good in this game. That one of those two is going to get one in the back of the net soon. Just Both causing fits for that Iceland back line. 
Just the fifth international appearance for Sanchez. Her second straight start, though. Coming off a five-goal season for the Washington Spirit. Although the goal that I think of when I think of Ashley Sanchez is from the semifinals of the NWSL. The game winner in the semifinals is Scoop against uh, O.L. Reign. I think a beauty and a huge goal en route to the Spirit's NWSL title. Corner kick gain from that press from the United States. Pushing into that high press. Another corner kick coming from Christy Mewis. Struck well with the left foot. Sanchez wins the header. Pugh pushed off. And Iceland clears it only as far as Tierna Davidson. O'Hara. Runar's daughter, bravely off her line. Davidson, part of the 2019 World Cup team, a bronze medal winner last summer in Tokyo. Mewis. Direct ball, snuffed out by Vigo's daughter. Fox intercepts. Again for Iceland, every time they start to get possession, it's one, two, maybe three passes in the press of the United States. Means that fourth, fifth pass constantly coughed up. Well, one for Mewis. She'll go wide again for Pugh, misfiring on the pass. A reminder, ESPN's coverage of U.S. soccer is presented by the all-electric Volkswagen ID4. Julie, you can keep adjusting that heater underneath. It's not going to get any warmer. I am extremely proud of the fans that are in attendance tonight. Can I just throw that out there? because I think I would have chosen a hot cocoa on the couch watching this on ESPN2 myself. Again, a winter oh storm warning in North gosh. Texas this week. I was at... Uh, you are braver than I am out there. That's what I want to tell you people. I was at one of the local department stores today. I ran into some folks from the Czech Republic staff, the Iceland staff. Everybody was buying any piece of winter clothing you could get your hands on. So I don't think anybody was ready for it. Macario helping out on the defensive end. And I heard you stole the last pair of gloves from this poor Icelandic staffer. No, Sebastian. not true. I was just ahead of the That's folks from the Czech Republic in line. Uh -huh. I gotta take care of me, Julia. I gotta take care of me. Jon Stotter then. Clicked on at the near post. Danger. Can the Americans get it clear? Yes, they do through Mallory Pugh. Pugh in a battle with Brynjir's daughter. Mewis now leading the attack. That's the daughter. And then Jan's daughter. Well, how about this special moment here in the booth? Joining us here at Toyota Stadium, none other than Abby Wombach. Abigail in the how house. How you doing? Great to have you with us. Having me. I didn't even know you were standing right there. It's absolutely freezing. I was so locked in on my heater. I just want to say hello to my daughters, Emma and Tish, watching back home. I just texted Emma. She might be freaking out right now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we're going to fix the heater for you. I'm, I'm oh. sharing my heater with you. How you, soft are we you know in what? California? My wife would have, I think, died watching me play <laughs> soccer. The bravery of these people. That's what I was just saying. I can't believe they're out there in shorts. 
They are running now. So, Abby, I, I got to say, I heard you pregame saying you'd like to take a crack at the commentary here. So I know you've been practicing your Icelandic pronunciations. Oh, uh, we'll, we'll let you take that over in just a little bit. But I think we got to ask you about all the stuff that's happening uh, around this team. I, I wonder what you made of the, the announcement on Tuesday that the equal pay lawsuit has finally been settled. Yeah, I mean, listen, I spent my whole day yesterday, Jules knows, because she was on the top of the list, texting Aww. all of the women who, and, and some men too, by the way, who had an impact and a part in the historic settlement yesterday. Um, I couldn't be more proud of the players and also couldn't be proud, more proud of, of the former players who've been a part of it too. You know, players like April Heinrichs, players like Karen Gabara, players like Christine Lilly. Michelle Akers. Michelle Akers, Julie Foudy. Julie Foudy, everybody. <laughs> Yo, jeez. Just women that maybe have fallen away from like the public consciousness that deserve to be remembered. Yeah, that was sweet of you. I get a text from Abby, one of the first texts, saying thanks for all your work as well. Sanchez now driving at the Icelandic defense on her right foot, cuts it in. Sanchez! Oh. Runar's daughter standing tall at the near post. San How good has Sanchez looked in this game? I mean, getting forward and quick. Yeah, and on the ball, the confidence. Yep. That's what, that, that's what this young group, that creativity. I'm just going to cut it here, find a little gap. Runa's daughter has that covered. I did not have that kind of technical ability. <laughs> just I just thought ball in goal. That's it. It worked. It worked. <laughs> Julie mentions it's a young team. It's obviously also a team in transition. You've been through a few of these transitions at the national team level. Yeah. How do you think it's going, and kind of what's the key to making it work? Listen, nobody wants Vladko's job. Nobody <laughs> in the world wants a job like his where he's got to choose from so many talented uh. players, and there's a way you got to build a program like the U.S. national team, and it takes time. And as a player, when I was a veteran, Sometimes it was frustrating when they would bring in rookies and young players. <laughs> it's like I want I want more more of my time. Yeah. But what do you, you mean I got to share these minutes? Yeah, exactly, but you got to do it to develop and keep the foundation strong and and that's what he's doing. So when when you look at a team like this, the only way you know of Megan Rapino is by giving Megan Rapino some time early in her career so she can develop the skills and the foundational elements it's so important for her to to be a star. How about those two goals from Kat Macario tonight as well? I mean, get out of here with the first one. I know. She, it goes on her right foot, and I was like, oh, this is going in. <laughs> and it goes in. Are you in the uh, she meant the second one camp? Am I in the what? You think she meant the second one? Well, look, as a forward. <laughs> you always mean you it, always right? You mean everyone you shoot. <laughs> I, I learned You're that like lesson <laughs> one time. I came off the field. And a reporter asks, asks me that, did you mean to cross it or shoot it? And I said, I meant to cross it. And a coach pulled me aside and said, Abby, you always mean to shoot it every time. <laughs> I said, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I think you're right. On the replay, you can kind of see her Take a checking out the goalie's position. Yeah. She meant it. She meant it. And I think I think it was Mal Pugh who ended up in the goal. Yeah. Smart, smart. Here Beautiful she goes. stuff here. Pugh again for a third. In front. <laughs> pew, pew, pew is right. <laughs> Abby, you haven't seen Sebastian's goal calling no. up, up close. You guys, he's bending over. He's getting into it. That's my bad back. <laughs> <laughs> we had just said it seemed it was only a matter of time before Mal Pew or Sophia Smith would get in that call up of goal score. The beautiful ball in. And there it is for the finish. It Good. felt like it was coming. Good for Mal. Good for Mal. The 20th goal of her international career has the United States with one hand firmly on the She Believes Cup trophy. All right, Abby, here's the lineup. You got a few minutes. 
<laughs> Remember, daughter, daughter. Hey, yeah, so something daughter <laughs> is for sure. Can, can, wait, can we take another look at that offside call? I would just like to see that again. Kayla's going to run it back for us, so you can you can ask for these things. When we get a moment, we're going to look at that because she might have just been off. Let's take a look at that again. Um, Abby, you're here for Abby's Places, right? Yeah. What are you doing? Tell me what you're doing. I got a little show on ESPN Plus. Yeah. Abby's Places, you know, you've been on it. Yeah. You've been uh, on it, Julie. I've yeah. that one. Yeah. Thanks for watching, Sammy. No, I, I've seen a lot of them. <laughs> um, and it's just fun. We're going around the world. Literally, I, I, I head out to London next week uh, to shoot some episodes and it's just a lot of fun learning about soccer, even myself, like learning about the, the game of soccer, the world's game of soccer. Um, it's awesome. Who's coming up this season? Uh, well, Jules actually just made a little cameo. Oh, here's our offside look. Let's see it. Oh, Ooh. she's leaning. She's leaning. You're leaning. Come on. Yeah. The right foot of the, the back defender. That's what I'm saying. I think yeah. they might keep her on, you know, if we drew listen, that line. Let's just, let's just let those go. Yep. I know. They call it way too close yes. all the time. But you're like, it's a fingernail. You're right. a defender. What I are you know. talking about? And Julie? then, you know, I have to spend the next 10 minutes explaining what offside actually means to my wife, Glennon. <laughs> Baby, I love you and I miss you and I'm coming home. View <laughs> pulling away from everybody. Try to slip it to Macario. Iceland half clear. Sullivan on it now. So what was this episode you were doing here? Yeah, so we shot uh, Hall of Fame, right? So yep. this, this stadium is actually attached to the National Soccer Hall of Fame. Um, so we did a little fun guest, uh, Ke Casey Kelly. I can't give it all away, Julie. You're going to have to tune in. Well, it was something on the fact that you wanted to be a commentator. And so I was like, get out to the booth, second half, let's go. Yeah, well, Come actually. Come on, those watching at home. I actually don't want, ever want to be a commentator because, <laughs> Jules, this is your gig. No, 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 This no, is no. yours. The more people we bring into the party, the better. No, no, That's I'm always talking my about philosophy. you taking Julie's gig. We're talking about you taking my gig. I need a break, <laughs> okay, so. Do play by play, yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> let's hear it. Let's do it. On three, two, one, Abby's rehearsal for play by play. Katarina plays it to, I think it's Pew. See, I, I'm, uh, that's a penalty. That's actually Sophia Smith on that. Sophia side. Smith, look at her, see? I'm, 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 Off to a blinding start. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's Sophia, it's just they, you know, those forwards, they all, they're changing positions every time. I know, it's all. All right, right Mal's got the, the headgear on, I see this. Yeah, those are the little things you have to notice. Two goals and an assist for Mallory Pew so far this tournament. Mostly whenever I'm watching, I'm just like, tackle, tackle her. Yeah, but you got a show on ESPN Plus. Julie, you got laughter permitted. Abby's doing a great podcast as well with Glennon. It's the best. We can do hard things. It's so good. Yeah, we don't even have to leave our house. It's the uh, best job in the world. I know, seriously. <laughs> Isn't it? Abby, have you been on Laughter Permitted yet? I have, twice. Twice? Wow. You know, do you know she was our opening segment, like the very number one episode nice. we did with her and Glennon? You got to start with a bang. <laughs> got to start with the best. Fox and Pew combining down the near sideline. I mean, Jules, do you miss playing? Do I miss playing? Yeah, do you miss playing? It takes a really nice field on a really nice day <laughs> in a really big tournament for me. <laughs> so, so you're saying today, not? Not huh? today, I don't. <laughs> and I had in my contract that I only played if it was 70 degrees or above. <laughs> in between the penalty spots. That's why I dropped the not so subtle hint. It would really be nice to get two heaters in the booth. That's good. For this game. Oh. <laughs> Do you miss playing, more importantly? No. You're closer to it. No, no, no. No. My body was done. And I'm actually paying for it now. Foul. I know. That's why I was trying to talk to you about pickleball, about beach volleyball, all the old lady, old guy sports, I'm telling you. No. They're game changers. Play a lot of that in my life. 
Ashley Sanchez got two assists tonight down on the ground. Guys, we've got a huge year coming up for the United States women's national team as we take another look at the foul. Looks like might have caught her right leg. Looks like she also got an arm to the face as well. You can see how slick it is and icy out there still. And you bring your daughter. Making her 99th international appearance for Iceland as Ashley Sanchez gets checked out. I was mentioning the big year coming up for the United States. We've got the CONCACAF W Championship set to be played July in Monterrey, Mexico. It's qualifiers not just for the World Cup, guys, but for the Olympics as well. Four oh. teams from CONCACAF will get a ticket to the World Cup, but only one will get a guaranteed spot in the Olympics. Uh, Is that true? Yeah. <gasps> yeah. So that Here we are. USA, Canada, both of the only two teams that have qualified for that tournament. The rest of that field still TBD. But, uh, I'm yeah, nervous. That's, what, that's I'm what nervous. makes you a little bit more nervous, which is why you see this acceleration of needing to get the youth some minutes. Yeah. And why Andonovsky thought, hey, let's go fairly veteran free in this tournament to see if we can get players like Sanchez some extra minutes in these moments. And that's why this game, honestly, is so important because it was a must win, as we knew coming in to this game. They couldn't walk away the United States with a draw. And they did not want to leave this She Believes Cup without the title. Mm. Becky Sauerbrunn telling us last night it was a pressure game, a must-win game, and the perfect time for this young group to face that next test. They're facing it well here. Is a fourth on the way. Smith cuts it back. Still Smith. Another fine save from Runar's daughter. Good defending by Gisela daughter on that left side. I thought Sophia Smith had her with her pace, stayed right with her. She is on that left side. Eliezer Fear's daughter has checked in for Iceland wearing the number three. MLS on ESPN kicks off this Sunday with the LA Galaxy, led by Chicharito Hernandez, hosting the defending MLS Cup champions, New York City FC. John Champion, Taylor Twelman on the call at 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. You can catch it on ESPN or streaming live on the ESPN app. Y'all, I want to thank you for having me. Abby Wombach, Abigail Mary Wombach. Y'all have such good voices. We do? Yes. Thank you. Keep talking. I wish you'd go talking. on Twitter more, because that's not what social media tells us, me all the time, anyway. Hey, that's just our job. Hey, can you come to every game and hang out with us in it's the second so half? Fun. That'd it's be so fun. fun. All right, I love you guys. All right, Bye, we uh, look forward to Abby's places. We'll be catching me. this season on ESPN+. Plus. Right Julie's going to be on it. Casey Keller's going to be on it. Plenty of big names. Looking forward to that. So fun to see her here. What a good surprise. I was like, what? Love that lady. She literally was one of the first to text and say, I'm taking my day to spend thanking all of mm. those players who maybe weren't listed in this lawsuit or getting us any of that 24 million and to thank them. I mean, that is Abby Wombach right there to a T. Mm. So giving. Saw that sentiment from a lot of players, especially like the young players, Sophia Smith going to Twitter, thanking past and current US players for their nonstop efforts in the equal pay litigation. <laughs> Brynja's daughter put her laces through that, only to see it blocked by Cook. U.S. women soon to make it 30 for 30 in the state of Texas. I'm hoping for Iceland because I was able to talk to her this morning as well. Former Duke standout. Natasha Anasi, number 19 for Iceland. She's sitting on the bench right now. Scored, actually, her first international goal for Iceland in the last She Believes Cup game. 
She is from this Dallas-Fort Worth area. Such a great story. Talk about coming full circle. She actually played with the Dallas Texans and played right here at this Frisco complex. She said, this, these were our fields. There was nothing around here. She said, when we pulled up, I was like, wait, what? Macario causing trouble. She went to play professionally after graduating from Duke and Iceland, and then there she is on the bench. Now born in Irving, Texas, just about uh, 30 miles south of here. Her parents came to the United States from Kenya in the 80s after Duke. There they are, and her there two they brothers. Are. Look at that. All right, <laughs> enjoying this. Brave in this weather. She actually uh, played for the United States under 18s and under 23s, part of those setups. Moved to Iceland in 2014 to play professionally. She became an Icelandic citizen in 2020 and debuted in March of that year. See her warming up on the sideline. It'd be great to have that story come full circle by getting some minutes in front of her home crowd and family. She said, actually, the courage of my parents coming to live their American dream mm. from Kenya gave me the courage to go to Iceland and try that. And now she married a man from Iceland. They have a daughter together. And what a story. I said, wow. Smith. Danger here. Two on one. Smith and Macario. Smith. Runar's daughter, Sanchez, blocked away. William's daughter, class from the Icelandic number eight, dancing out of pressure. Brynjar's daughter now. U.S. came into this game knowing a draw wouldn't do the job. Had to have a win. They're just over a quarter hour from it. Iceland have never won an international tournament. Closest they've ever come, the 2011 Algarve Cup, where they were runners up. Albert's daughter. Couldn't get there in time. Goal kick for the U.S. Here's another look at that Sophia Smith. What a nice touch this is to pick it up on the other side. And it's almost like she's caught between two minds here. She sees Macario on her left side, takes a look, decides to try and beat Ruder's daughter. Doing everything right. Just have to get that last piece of the puzzle. Clean it up in terms of sharpness, just a little bit in front of goal. Another break here for the United States. This time it's Pew and Macario. Macario, back to Pew. Yes! Four for the U.S. And the She Believes Cup is theirs. One of the big topics of discussion coming into this game for Andonovsky was the chemistry of that front three. Pew, Smith, and Macario. No problem in that department tonight. The pressure to win back this ball by Macario, and then the unselfishness of these two. Pew pulls that defender in. Macario gives it back to her, and that is just beautiful football, ladies and gentlemen. What a nice sequence by those two. All started from the Macario press in midfield and weaving their way through that Icelandic defense to really put that nail in what should be the end of this game for Iceland. That is too large a hole to come back from. So is Mallory Pugh assisting Katarina Macario on her second goal, and Macario returning the favor on Pugh's second strike of the night. Same front three that we saw frustrated in the tournament opener against the Czech Republic, but they have come to life here. Four goals. The Unstotter. A 
O'Hara closing her down quickly, and Murphy first to it. This is a de facto final. We got a true final coming for you Saturday on ESPN, plus the Carabao Cup final between Christian Pulisic's Chelsea and Liverpool. That's Saturday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern time on ESPN+. Macario bullying her way through the Icelandic defense. Sanchez! Skipped it wide at the near post. Just looking at the clock going, interesting that we haven't seen a substitution yet for the United States. And as I look down, three about to come on for the United States. Here's Sanchez on that last look. Macario again fighting, fighting, pulling a defender. Off the mark, but Sanchez has been on the mark, in my opinion, in this game all over the field from that attacking central midfield position. Pugh looking for more. The Americans preparing a triple sub on the near sideline. So is Iceland. Sanchez again, still on her right. Macario, left footed shot, blocked away. Mewis for O'Hara. Ashley Hatch, Lynn Williams, and Margaret Midge Purse. Three American players set to enter the match. Sanchez back to goal, trying to find some space. Ball trickles out of bounds for an Iceland goal kick. Here comes the triple sub. Looks like it'll be a whole new front three. Ashley Hatch, Lynn Williams, and Mitch Purse. Iceland preparing their substitutions as well. Astair Anna Dotter into the match. Alexandra Jonas Dotter into the match. And Ingeberg Segorda Dotter into the match. Making three substitutions, leaving the match for Iceland at number two, CF Alta Dotter. Number five, Gunhildur Young's daughter. Number 18, Goran Arna daughter. Enter to match, number six, Nina Gunhildur's daughter. Number 15, Alexander Young's daughter. Number 20, Alexander Young's daughter. As we wait for these subs, reminder that ESPN's coverage of the Bundesliga continues all season long on ESPN Plus. Sunday, got Ricardo Pepe in Augsburg hosting a Dortmund side that are trying to keep pace with league leaders Bayern Munich. Coverage begins 11.20 a.m. Eastern time on ESPN+. And there we see the last of the three substitutions. Katarina Macario with a brace for her efforts tonight. Replaced by Ashley Hatch. So it'll be Purse on the right wing, Williams on the left wing, Hatch wearing the number seven, but operating as a number nine. How about in the 80th minute, if you're Iceland, four goals down, you have three fresh legs coming on that front line. And number 20, Katarina Macario. Jan Stotter, the cross. Not enough on it to trouble this American defense. Oh, we mentioned it earlier, Julie. Season seven of Laughter Permitted. Coming up. Begins actually on March 8th. You got some great guests, including I'm reading here three time US Olympic medalist, Lindsay Jacob Ellis. That's yeah, a big get, huh? Big get. Two time Olympic gold medalist. Her story is amazing as well. Also, looks like we're going to get Nadia Nadim 
mm. soccer player who has another tremendous story. Yep. Afghanistan left with the Taliban, plays for Denmark, plays for racing Louisville. Now a doctor. Doctor now, yep. Speaks like 700 languages. I think 11, actually. Yep. Can you imagine speaking 11 languages? NWSL fans will uh, know her well. NWSL fans know Mallory Pugh quite well. This will be second. I think as, as these waning moments wind down, one of the things this U.S. team takes tremendous pride in, whether they're young, youngsters or veterans, is keeping a clean sheet. And they have done so, so far in this She Believes Cup. And this will be another moment they want to get into the locker room with zero goals scored on them with a complete shutout. Fox cuts out the through ball. And I think the next challenge for Andonovsky is he's going to have to start layering back in now and start making the decisions. He's got the April window. He's got the June window. He's obviously got the NWSL seasons. He's going to be watching Haran and Makari over in the own. But he's going to have to start layering back in some of that veteran group. It's not to say all of them will come back, but boy, to Abby's point, I wouldn't want to be Vlako Andonovsky right now having to make some of those decisions. But what a great problem to have, honestly, with so much talent. You've got the older group, largely that forward contingency press, Tobin Heath, Rapino, Alex Morgan, You've got that middle group he talks a lot about. Ertz still not playing. Sam Mewis, Crystal Dunn away with pregnancy. Who am I missing in there in that middle group? Lindsay Horan. Lindsay Horan. Yep, she was supposed to be in this uh, group, but suffered Rose an injury Lavelle. after the roster was announced. Filiam's daughter. But this is the ending that they had hoped for. And the progression in this tournament says so much about their progression that he wanted to see as young players coming into this moment. You think about it, Czech Republic played a good game, a lot of domination, their first game, walk away 0-0. Never really threatened defensively, but couldn't get anything on the board. Second game, three own goals by New Zealand, gets them off to a fast start. They put two in after that, they walk away with 5-0. But he said, look, I, I wanna see more consistency in that final third. And you saw that happening tonight, able to crack a... Very solid Iceland team who doesn't get enough credit, in my opinion, for where they're at. Hatch for Purse. Somehow manages to control it. Now Williams. Williams' effort to the far bar, well placed, but not enough on it to beat Runar's daughter. the 11th time the U.S. has played here at Toyota Stadium. Julie, you remember the last time we were here? I know, it's so crazy. Crazy, right? We haven't talked about that yet. It was March 11th, 2020, the, the day before everything shut down, and the uh, U.S. beat Japan 3-1 that night in this stadium the to the play day, the 2020 She Believes yeah, Cup. Literally, COVID and the world and sporting world shut down that next day. We barely got home. Another triple substitution coming here for the United States. Looks like Jalen Howell would be the first to come in for Ashley Sanchez. Ashley Sanchez. Emily Sonnet and Becky Sauerbrunn preparing to enter the match as well. There's Jalen Howell coming off a great career at Florida State, just drafted by Racing Louisville of the NWSL. Andy Sullivan leaves the match here in the 86th minute. We talked about Anasi, Natasha Anasi with Iceland having a full circle moment. You'll also remember, Sebastian, this last match here was the day after U.S. Soccer had filed that brief 
where they argued the women were inherently inferior to the men, strength-wise, skill-wise, and the U.S. players taking their warm-up jerseys and turning them inside out. And to contrast that with the equal pay settlement hmm. that just happened yesterday and the timing of those two. You remember the end of that game? I, I had to read a statement from then President Carlos Cordero. After I have to say, I invited air. him to come on and do an actual interview. He declined. <laughs> and uh, a few days later, he was no longer president, having resigned from his post at the top of the U.S. Soccer Federation. As we mentioned, there is an election coming up uh, on March 5th. The two candidates for the presidency, Cindy Parlocone, who you heard from earlier today, and the aforementioned Carlos Cordero. Hatch. On it again. NWSL Golden Boot winner with the Washington Spirit. Purse trying to round the corner, well defended. Another go for Purse. Purse across. And into the net. It's Christy Mewis with a fit for the Americans. Another area they can check the box in terms of finding seams. Mitch Purse rounding that corner. Couldn't quite get there the first time. Faces up. And then once she's able to get around, takes a look. And it's Mewis in that seam. And that is the evolution that they've wanted to see. Tight in the six, tight in that box. Mew is stabbing at it with that left foot, just needing to block it. Let me finish up some uh, housekeeping there on those substitutions. It was Becky Sauberman that ended up coming up on for Alana Cook. Emily Sonnet that ended the match for Andy Sullivan. That's the uh, fifth international goal for Mewis. racing forward from her left back spot. As we hit the 90th minute here in Frisco. Sonic called for the foul after she loses possession. Sonic, another member of the NWSL champion Washington Spirit on this national team. Versatile defender. Williams' daughter. To the back post. Flies past everybody as the Americans dodge a bullet.
Just the one minute of added time, and we're almost through it. U.S. seconds away from a fifth She Believes Cup title. Last chance here for Iceland to put one on the board. Quickly for Jon's daughter. Well recovered from Lynn Williams. Again, so important for the DNA of this U.S. team to keep that clean sheet even at 5-0, especially for the whole tournament. And there it is, a clean sheet on the day and a championship for the tournament. The U.S. Women's National Team 2022 She Believes Cup champions as they rout Iceland in the finale by a final score of 5-0. Dominant performance, Julie, for the United States. Yeah, and I, and I think when you talk about the Deloitte Impact player, there's one of them right there. And Katarina Macario, two goals and assist. And you also have to talk about the other player, Mal Pugh, also with two goals and assist, having such an impact in this game. And when we talked about coming in to this final game, having to win, having the pressure, you cannot create that pressure in single one-off games. It was so important for them to get it done, and they did just that. Let's take a look then at the impact performance, as you mentioned, brought to you by Deloitte. It is Katarina Macario. She opened the scoring, Julie, in the 37th minutes. What a beauty that oh. one was. Put on our right foot here, taking a little look, sees it's open again, just finding the opportunity to chip that keeper. And then the assist later. This is Mal Pugh's first goal. The assist later by Macario to set up Pew again. The beautiful combination back and forth. And a tremendous performance by those front three, really. And something that Andonovsky is wanting to see the chemistry. Pew with two goals and an assist. And I think they're going to be thrilled with that result tonight. This tournament, this game, so much about the young players. And in a must-win moment, this group has delivered. The U.S. Women's National Team once again, your 2022 She Believes Cup champions. Katarina Macario with a brace, Mallory Pugh with a brace, Christy Mewis adding the fifth as the U.S. take home yet another title.